Warning, the system you are about to see was built by a trained professional and should not be attempted at home. Wait, wait a second, Anthony wasn't trained? He's not very professional either. Regardless, he managed to create a fully custom water-cooled system for under $100 spent on the water cooling parts themselves. So today we'll see just what he did in order to achieve both CPU and GPU cooling for quiet, high performance cooling in this tiny little MATX machine. Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Now right off the bat, keen viewers will notice that this is no ordinary Silverstone Fortress FT03 case. At the top is a funky little SwiftTech MC Res micro reservoir that's attached to the frame. And then coming out of that is some Primo Chill Advanced LRT tubing that goes in th in thigh ha! inside through the PCI slot covers, which, oh, I can't believe he did this, which are just bent aside to make room for the tubing. Oh. Oh, that makes my brain hurt. Just apparently didn't have a Dremel handy at the time. Opening it up, you'll see the intricate loop that Anthony managed to stuff inside this tiny MATX case. Now, this system was actually built about two years ago, but the older hardware is perfect for a home theater PC or, you know, uh, Steam in home streaming machine. So inside, you'll find an Intel Core i5-3570K. I'm gonna get these off. There we go. Yep, well, I'll try not to break Anthony's case too hard here. <coughs> An XFX uh, Radeon HD 7850 graphics card, 4 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RAM, a Gigabyte Z68 motherboard, a Kingston V300 SSD, and something that you may not have seen before. A power color 1000 watt power supply. Yes, it's a little overkill, but he found it at an NCX warehouse sale for 40 bucks, so you can't really fault him for that. No, I'll continue to fault him for this reservoir. Anthony started off by doing the overclock.net red mod, where users simply zip tied a CPU liquid cooler onto their video card. But this wasn't enough for Anthony, he needed more. So he took two Corsair H60s and actually spliced them together like some sort of evil, cheap, DIY scientist. The barbs on the original coolers happened to be 3 8 inch inner diameter, so the new tubing just plugs right in, and then Anthony kicked it up another notch and repurposed the original AM3 mounting bracket by drilling a hole that matches the video card spacing for a more secure mount. It's funny, he can find a drill, but not a Dremel to do something with those PCIe slots. Go figure. All of the little Zalman VRM heat sinks are still attached. Those are notorious for falling off, so uh, it's going pretty well so far. And the loop finally goes through two 120 millimeter radiators that are cooled via 120 millimeter Cougar turbine fans. So why did he do all of this? Well, he's a bit of a sucker for a quiet machine and he's had a bit too much time on his hands lately. So with the fans at around 750 RPM and those pumps being reasonably quiet from a distance, like an HTPC distance, it's gonna be pretty much silent unless you're, you know, getting your ears a lot closer to it. When gaming, his processor and video card reach a peak of just 45 degrees with zero additional noise, the fans don't need to ramp up at all. And so by contrast, that stock FX XFX cooler on the graphics card used to hit 75 degrees under load and had a loud whiny fan. Reliability actually looks pretty good overall. There's a fair bit of general airflow over the motherboard and with an external reservoir, the coolant levels are very easy to monitor. Okay, that is the one advantage of having it here. With the pumps built into the water blocks, the loop actually has two pumps working in series. So if one of them fails, the system will just kind of keep on going. As long as you've got those pumps plugged into something where you can monitor the RPM, you'll know if they fail, but the system won't die. And because he's got two radiators, even one of his fans can die. And the system still won't suffer a catastrophic failure. So altogether, the two CPU coolers, the reservoir and the tubing cost Anthony around a hundred bucks if you pick and choose your parts and get them on sale. Now, obviously, 
we don't recommend anyone actually do this, since it does void a lot of your warranties and has a pretty high chance of failure if you don't know what you're doing. Although apparently not that high because I'm pretty sure Anthony didn't know what he was doing and he managed to pull it off. If you are interested in something like this, we'd probably recommend you go with a Kraken G10 liquid cooling bracket for the graphics card or the Arctic Cooling Accelero Hybrid as they both offer a much more secure mounting system. If you're not comfortable with that, NCIX PC does offer custom water-cooled systems that are covered under a warranty so you have peace of mind. But otherwise, well there you go. We've at least planted the seed of the idea in your head and what you do with that is totally up to you. Guys, let us know in the comments below well, uh, whether you like to do DIY tweaks on your system and if you've ever tried using a CPU cooler on your video card. Thanks for watching guys, like and subscribe and all that noise and we'll see you again next time.